Hello! Today I'm trying something a little bit new. I am actually making a tutorial and little speed drawing thing where I'm walking you through my inking and coloring process in Adobe Illustrator. So the first thing that you're going to notice is that I've sped up the video a little bit. I figure you probably don't want to see me draw at my normal speed because that can get kind of boring. Uh, but one of the other things that I'm doing here is I've uh, switched over to Illustrator's touch mode. I am drawing on a uh, Surface Pro, and so it's a touch screen. I got my pen working for me, and uh, I really like Illustrator's touch mode, so that's what I'm going to be drawing in today. Now what I'm doing here is I'm just taking the pen and I'm tracing my strokes. What I've done is I've sketched out in Photoshop just using kind of a, a pencil tool my, my rough illustration that I'm going to be using. I pulled that illustration into Illustrator, and now what I'm doing as I'm tracing a lot of those strokes. This is the inking process. And you'll probably see me, as I'm drawing them, go in and, and edit some of these strokes and, and tweak things as I go. Another thing you're gonna notice is that I'm totally overshooting uh, the lines. So my lines are crossing uh, pretty much everywhere. Now, there's a really good reason for why I'm doing this. Uh, I'm gonna kinda get into it later, but that's an important step in the process is I really do wanna overshoot those lines. Uh, it has to do with my custom brushes and some of the other things that I use in my drawing process. All right, now that I have kind of gotten all my lines in place, I'm gonna go up to the corner of the screen, I'm gonna select my mode, and I'm gonna go back to painting. So now here we are, kind of back in our standard painting mode, and this is what most people think of when they see Adobe Illustrator. Then my next step is to turn off my pencil layer. I don't really need that anymore. All right, I'm gonna take a quick break from that video here to actually explain something because our next step is kind of important to me. What I'm going to do is I have a bunch of custom brushes that I've built over time. And what you see on the screen here are these custom brushes that I have. You know, one here is kind of pointy at the ends. This one kind of has blunt ends. It's a straight line. You know, this one starts off kind of flat on the end and goes to a point. This one, these guys over here have slightly less points to them. So each one of these brushes has an important uh, style that, that I want to uh, kind of have in my artwork. And so that's why I have them here. I've created them over time. And so what I'm going to be doing in the next step is I'm going to be changing the boring lines that my pen drew to these kind of more interesting, uh, almost realistic-y looking ink lines that I like in my, in my artwork. So I'm going to scroll over to the side here really quick, and I have this shape here because I want to show you how I make a brush really quick. I'm just going to select that shape, and what you want to do is my brush menu is over here on the right hand side, and I'm going to click this little menu here. And one of the options at the top is new brush. I'm going to tap that, and now I have some other options here. And you, This is fun to play around with if you have the opportunity, but I'm going to focus on one of these options. That is art brush. So I select that, and I click OK. And here we go. Now I can name this brush. I can change widths. I can change all sorts of things on this on this art brush. Uh, I can scale it. Um, there's different directions. So if I want it to be pointing up or if I want it to be pointing left and right, um, it totally changes how the brush works. So uh, I'm going to click OK and make my brush. And then I'll select my brush tool. And then what I'll do is I'll draw. And you can kind of see it's taken that green shape and it has applied it to my brush. Um, kind of an interesting tool, um, but that's what I'm doing. That's what I've done is I've created these brushes and my next step, uh, I'm gonna show you how I use those brushes. So back to my drawing. First step is I'm going to select all my lines here and I'm going to change them to the most common brush that I want most of these lines to be, which is kind of the one that's kind of pointy and skinny on all sides. Now you can see here that uh, it looks kind of funny, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to some of the outlines and I'm going to change them to the flat end brushes. Uh, I, here and there I'm going to be changing the weight of some of those lines. So basically I'm just going through and deciding what different brushes I want for each line that I go through. This is more of a taste thing. I like my outlines to be a little thicker and I like my inside lines to be kind of those thinner, pointier lines because I like to define the edge of the character. Uh, but that's just kind of kind of how I draw. So my next step here is that I highlight my entire character and I duplicate him once I kind of get all my brushes in place. The reason I'm doing this is because I'm about to destroy my original uh, line work here. Uh, on purpose, of course, it's all for the greater good. It's part of the coloring process and getting rid of some of those excess overrun lines that I put in there. 
All right, so here's the fun part. What I have here is I have a close-up of my farmer, and I have the entire thing selected. All these brushes and strokes that I put in here, they are selected. They're ready to go. What I'm going to do next, and uh, this is something I learned from artist Clay Butler. I think it's a fantastic technique for breaking down your artwork. And I'm going to show you how this works. So I'm going to go to Object, which is this drop-down at the top. And then I'm going to go down to this. It's called Expand Appearance. What this is going to do is take all those brushes, and when I click it, it has taken those strokes that those brushes are on and made them solid objects. So my next step is I want to get rid of the edges that overlap so it'll make my uh, cartoon artwork cleaner. To do that, I'm gonna go to Live Paint, which I go to Object, then down to Live Paint, and then there's an option called Make. I click that. Now, I could start painting here, but I'm not ready to yet. I'm gonna break this apart. Uh, so I got to go back to object, going to go back to live paint where I just was, but instead of making it this time after making it, I'm going to hit expand. So now that breaks him apart and all these odds and ends are now separate pieces. So I'll right click on him and I'll ungroup him. I might have to ungroup him twice. Uh, and now you can see I can grab just some of these little details here. Whoops. Anywhere where there's an overlap. Now I can delete that overlapping line and I can just come in here and delete all my little lines. And you can see the hat is already starting to look really clean and much, much better. And so all those overlap lines that I drew in there, all of a sudden things are starting to look uh, a lot better, a lot cleaner. Um, and this is going to uh, make it much easier to color when we get to that part. So I'm gonna race through that and start cleaning these up. All right, so I'm just going to speed through this and clean up these lines as fast as possible. Man, I wish I worked this fast, but I'm actually speeding this way, way up. It's time to move on to the coloring. So what we want to do now is I'm going to select my entire character again, and I'm going to duplicate him again. Uh, every step of the process, I want to kind of maintain what I had before because uh, some of these processes are destructive. So this last step is I'm going to go down to Live Paint, and I'm going to click Make again. And now I can actually paint. I'm going to zoom in a little bit so you can see it better. And I'm going to find my paintbrush tool. It took me a minute to find it. There it is. Uh, so now that I have my paint bucket tool, I'm going to go over to the uh, upper right-hand corner. And I'm going to select, I'm probably going to move it to an RGB workspace because that's what I work in. And then I'm going to just find the color that I want to start using. And now you see any enclosed area I'm going to be able to apply paint to. So now I can just race through this and I'm going to go through and I'm going to paint and paint and paint and paint. And I'm just going to fill in all these enclosed areas. And part of the reason that these areas are enclosed is because I overshot all those lines. There are no openings in any of my ink work. All right, so for my next step, what I want to do is I'm going to create another layer, and I'm going to do some of my light highlights. So uh, on this layer, what I'm going to do is I'm probably going to draw a bunch of white shapes. I'm going to go back to my touch mode to do this uh, because it's just much easier for me to kind of draw in this touch mode because I'm going to be drawing shapes on top of what I already have. So I'm going to switch over to my pencil tool. And there we go. And now I'm probably going to start on his hat. And I'm just going to start drawing um, where I want this highlight to be. And then once I get that done, I'm going to change that to white and get rid of the stroke. Voila. And now from here on out, I can uh, just kind of race through it and add all my white highlights. Then once I have all that set up, I'm going to go back uh, from the touch menu back to painting. Now I'm in painting, I'm going to select everything on that layer. And I'm going to go in here and I'm going to find my transparency menu. And now I'm going to fiddle with some of the options a little bit. What I'm looking for here is the overlay mode. That's the one that I like to use. You can play with multiply if you want to and some of the other, other things to find it. But as soon as you set it to overlay, you can see that you kind of get this uh, cool transparent effect. And from there, I can play with the opacity a little bit. I like to go in here and then uh, if, 
if I want a little more, you know, glow on it, I might change the opacity on individual like little elements as I go. Um, and that works pretty well and it creates a nice little shine. All right, so next up, we're going to do the same thing again. I'm going to create a new layer and I'm going to go back to my touch workspace because I'm going to be drawing. It's easier to draw on there than the other workspaces, at least on my tablet. And now I'm going to grab my pencil and I'm just going to block in, instead of white this time, I'm going to block in a bunch of shadows. So if my light's coming from the upper left everywhere where I think a shadow might be, I'm just going to block it in with some nice solid black colors. And I'm going to do the same thing again with the transparency on this that I did with the white. Get all that in place. All right, going to go back to my uh, painting mode. And there we go. Transparency menu is already open, so I can just select everything. It's all on the layer. And now I'm just going to uh, probably keep this as normal and just play with my different uh, transparencies and get the shadows to look exactly the way that I want to. And that about does it. I think I'm gonna add just a quick gradient behind him because I think uh, just having a background color makes the illustration look a little bit more done, you know, a little bit more final there. Uh, so that's it. That's the end of my first tutorial, and uh, I hope this was useful to you guys. It's some stuff I've cobbled together over the years, watching other people do this stuff, and so I figured it's probably worth, you know, me sharing a little bit of that. Um, I'm going to try to do more of these because a lot of people have requested things like speed painting and tutorials and, and more of that kind of stuff in between my reviews, and I really enjoy doing it, uh, and it makes some good content. So if you enjoy it, subscribe, um, and also feel free to like the video. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments down below, or, uh, you know, hit me up on Twitter. Oftentimes I'm a lot faster answering there. So thank you guys and have a wonderful day.